Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our duel number 170, finding dates. Hey, welcome back, everyone. I had such a great question here, and I couldn't solve it. At least I couldn't solve it easily. So I went out to Mike Gervin. I said, Mike, hey, do you have a way to do this? And he said, yes, I have a way to do it. Let's do a duel. So uh, someone on YouTube sent in uh, this data, and every single cell in general has something like a document title followed by a date. And they wanted to break this data into the document title, what it is, what the thing is, and then what the date is, but the dates are completely evil. Like here, it's 20th January, uh, but down here, uh, there's things where the date might be after the cell, April 9th, right? And no matter which way it is, we want to find it. And sometimes there's two dates, and this is just completely horrible in that it is such a just a, a mixed up situation of dates, and it's possible to not even have. A, uh, a date show up, all right? So here's my attempt. Uh, out on the right-hand side, I'm going to put the things I'm looking for. What I really like here is they never abbreviated the month name. I really, really appreciate that. So type in January, and I'll drag out here uh, to December like that. And for each cell, I want to know, can we find equal find uh, that January cell? I'm going to press F4 one, two times to lock it down to just the row in uh, the text over there in column A, like that, I'll press F4 one, two, three times to lock it down to the column, right? And here, it's telling us that January is found in position 32, and for the other 11 months, it's going to tell us that it's not found at all. In other words, we're getting the value error. Now, what I need to do there is I need to find, I need to find the minimum value ignoring all of the value errors. So unhide this little formula here, equal aggregate, uh, and let's build this just from scratch. Equal aggregate, what we want is the min, so that's the number 5, and then ignore the error values, number 6, comma, and then all of these cells from January through December. And what that's going to tell us is that's going to tell us where the month happens. And in this case, we're going to get a 0 to say that the month uh, doesn't happen at all. All right, now let's unhide the rest of this. So, to handle the situation where uh, here we have 20 January or 1 November, I said the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at where that month starts and go back two cells, two cells, two characters, two characters, and see if that is a number or not. So, that's my column here called adjust to, adjust to, and here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to say, Take the mid of A2, starting at the where in G2, minus 2, uh, for a length of 1, add 0 to it, and ask, is that a number or not? All right, so is that a number? And then, uh, we'll also look for the situation where it is a two-digit date, so 20th of January. Uh, so that is called adjust 3. Go back 3 uh, characters from the where. Uh, so there's the where. Go back 3 characters for a length of 1, add 0 to it, and see if that's a number, all right? Then we're going to adjust, uh, and the adjusted where says if, uh, if, it's, if it's this weird case with zero, we're just going to put a really large value, 999. Otherwise, we're going to go from G2 and either go back 3 if adjust 3 is true, 2, or go back 2 if adjust 2 is true, or if none of those are true, uh, the where is going to be where the month starts, right? Now that we know that that adjusted where, we'll double click to copy that down. Uh, well, hey, now it's really easy. We're just going to, uh, for the title, we're going to say, take the left of A2. How many characters do we want? We want D2 minus 1, because that's uh, the minus 1 is to get rid of the, the space at the end. Although, I guess the trim is also getting rid of the space at the end. And then, for the date, we're going to use the mid. Mid, we're going to mid of A2, starting at the adjusted where in D2, and go out 50 or whatever long you think it could possibly be, and then the trim function, and we will double click to copy that down. All right, now the reason I reached out to Mike is I said, 
I wonder if there's a way that I could replace these 12 columns with a single formula, actually these 13 columns with a single formula. Is there some way that I could do this uh, using an array formula? And Mike, of course, wrote that great book, Control Shift Enter on Array Formulas. And I tried a few different things and, and in my mind, there was no way that it could be done. All right, but you know, let's go uh, ask the expert. So, Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, speaking of expert, this was pretty expertly done. You used find, aggregate, is number, mid. Now, when you sent this question over to me, I went ahead and solved it. And it is amazing how similar my solution is to yours. All right, so I'm going to go over to this sheet here. I'm going to start with figuring out where the start position in this text string is for each particular month. Now, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to, hey, use the search function. Now, you used find. I used search. Actually, probably find is better in this situation because find is case sensitive. Search is not. Now, normally, what we do with either find or search, I say, hey, go find January, comma, within this larger text string. That's how we normally use search, control, enter. And it counts on its finger, one, two, three, four, five. It says the 32nd character is where it found January. Now, instead of doing it in many cells across the columns, I'm going to hit F2. Come up here, and the find text. Notice we gave it one item. Search gave us one answer. But if I highlight the entire column of month names, now instead of a single item, I put many items in there. This is a function argument. We're putting an array of items in. And so that means we're doing a function argument array operation. Anytime you do that, you tell the function, hey, give me 12 answers, one for each month. Now, this will deliver an array. So if I try to enter this and copy down, it's not going to work. But let's go down to any particular cell, F2, and then F9 to look that, yes, in fact, it is delivering an array. And look at that. It looks like I, F2 up here, forgot to lock it. So I'm going to click on that in F4. Control Enter, double click and send it down. F2, F9, there we go. That's that array. There's exactly 12 answers. And there's the 34 and the 55. Now, from this array, since we always want the actual first month, not the second month, we want whatever the min is, because those are number of characters in from the left. So I'm going to click Escape, come up to the top, F2. I'm going to use the aggregate function. Hey, we would like to use aggregate 5, but no matter how hard you try, if you have an array operation, and we do here, if you try to put any function 1 to 13, it just doesn't work. But no problem. We have small. So number 15, comma. Any one of those functions 14 to 19, they understand array operations. And once you select 14 or above, this is the screen tip you're working off of, not this bottom one with the references. All right, comma. The second options here, we want to ignore errors, comma. That number 6 will then tell aggregate to look through here and ignore the errors. It will only see the numbers. And this is one of five functions in Excel. Look up some product, chi, square, test, aggregate, and index that actually have a special argument that can handle array operations without doing any special keystroke. So there is the array, comma. And then for k, we simply put a 1. That's our way of getting them in. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. And so that tells us the position where it found the first month name from this list. Now, we'll deal with the num error at the very end in our final formula. Now, we are going to have to take these and notice that sometimes there's a number before the month. And sometimes, like down here in December, there is not. So I'm going to do the same thing Mr. Excel did. I'm going to go back two characters and check whether it is a letter, or in this case, a number. Equals mid. There's the text comma, the starting position. Well, I want to start at 32 in this case and subtract to go back to, and comma, get exactly one character. Now, if I close parentheses, mid, left, right, they all deliver text. 
double click and send it down. And we want to check if it's a number. So watch this. The whole column is highlighted. Active cell at the top. I'm going to hit F2. We could do any math operation to convert text numbers back to numbers. So I'm going to add 0. Control Enter to populate this edited formula down through the column. Control Enter. Now we can ask the question, is the returned item a number? F2. So now I say is number. Close parentheses, Control Enter. So now we have a pattern of trues and falses. Now remember, we need to get the starting position. And for 32, we're definitely going to have to subtract 3 and start at that 20. But notice down here, we don't want to subtract any. So our logical test, if I hit F2, that will simply be put into the if logical test argument. If that comes out true, comma, then I want to jump back 3, comma. Otherwise, I want to jump back 0, close parentheses, Control Enter to populate that all the way down. Now we can take this number and subtract the number over here to give us our starting position. Active cell at the top, F2. I'm putting this inside of mid. There's the text, comma. And can you believe it? All of this to get the start number. So I'm going to click on that B2 and subtract our if. Come to the end, comma, and I'm just going to put a big number in here, 100, some big number big enough to get all the way to the end. Close parentheses and Control Enter to populate that all the way down. It looks like we have some extra spaces, and that makes sense because right here we went back three, so no problem. Active cell at the top, F2. I'm going to use the haircut function, the diet function, no, the trim function to remove extra spaces except for single spaces between words. Come to the end, close parentheses, Control Enter to populate that all the way down. Now I have the date. Oh, except for the num. Now, I could come to the top and use if error, but then it would run all of this plus that cell right there. And for a small data set, it doesn't matter at all. But with the goal of efficiency, I'm going to say if is number. And I'm going to click on that cell. That way, close parentheses, comma. The trigger for whether we run the formula is only based on that instead of the entire formula. If that comes out true, we want to run the formula, comma. Otherwise, double quote, double quote, that zero length text string will show nothing. Control Enter, double click and send it down. And now all we need to do is get the title. Well, I already have the text that I don't want in here, so I'm going to use the substitute function. Substitute, there's the text, comma. The old text, it's that right there, comma, the new text. Hey, I want to take that and substitute in nothing. There's our zero length text string. Control Enter, double click and send it down. Now I'm going to come over here to column B, right click, hide. And there we go. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Hey, Mike, that is brilliant, and I know exactly exactly where I went wrong uh, right here in row 12 when the formula returned the pound value error uh, you press F2 F9 to see that it's returning an array I when I got the value error I just swore a little bit and said why isn't this working never thought of pressing F2 F9 all right also I uh, like that uh, of course min and small comma one are the same but the difference is small comma one will work with an array in the aggregate function that was a beautiful beautiful trick and then i went through that whole hassle to look at two characters before and three characters before uh, you were smart enough to say hey we're going to go two characters before and if so go back three characters worst case you get a space but that extra space eliminated by the trim and then the uh, cherry on top using substitute function to get rid of the date text in column c what a brilliant, brilliant way to go. All right, so I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun. It's Dueling Excel time.